Hello, uh, this is a short video about uh, taking photos of the sun for the solar eclipse that's coming up. It's, uh, it's getting a little, little tight to be able to get some equipment, so I figure I need to make this video quick, get out there so you guys can be prepared. So, the sun is bright, obviously. You cannot take pictures of the sun with your camera without some sort of filter involved. Now, you could choose to buy a nice, very nice sun filter. It'll run you anywhere, probably $150 or so. Another option is you can get these temporary, like universal filters. Uh, I've, I've seen them sold by B&H Photography. That's where I got these ones at. Um, and uh, they're like 15 to $25, depending on if you get a, a single or a double. And it's a good solution because, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna take pictures of the sun very often. Um, I don't want to spend 150 bucks on a filter that I'm only pretty much going to use once. Uh, so I was giving these a whirl. Now, one issue is that it seems like they're kind of sold out. You're going to have to find the size that works for you and, and try to buy them. Uh, hopefully they'll get some more stock in real quick. I'm going to have some links down below and what they're called. But it's basically called, I think these ones are called uh, uh, Daystar. Yeah, Daystar filters. Uh, so if you search on B&H Photo, Daystar filters. Um, universal filter these will pop up so the way it comes is it comes flat kind of like in this packaging right here you pull it out and then you fold it into this shape here this allows you then to put it over the lens of your camera uh, they come in different sizes uh, i think 50 millimeter uh, 70 millimeter and 90 millimeter uh, you have to choose whichever is appropriate for the lens you're planning on using to take pictures of the sun now, I have learned, because I got these ones a little bit earlier, that uh, I was planning on using my, uh, my just kit lens, my 18-55. to Seemed like a, a fine lens to use, nothing fancy, you know, and they had the filters are readily available. Uh, turns out that it's not going to work out as well as I thought. The sun is very small, even when zoomed into 55 millimeters on the kit lens. So you're going to choose something a little bit longer of a lens. I'm now planning on using my 80 to 200. So something in that range, whatever a longer lens is, uh, you'll probably want to choose. Here's a few photos of the sun I've taken. You can see that it's, it's pretty small. And, and just by itself, the sun is a very uninteresting uh, subject matter. It's just a dot. It's a black plane and a white dot. Um, the other thing that's nice about getting them is you get a little opportunity to, to play with your exposures. Um, I mean, if you got it the day of the solar eclipse, it, you know, only a few minutes is required really to be able to determine how much, what the exposure is going to be. But just to give you an idea of the ballpark, if, at, at, uh, if I'm hand holding the camera, ISO of 800, uh, I found that uh, F10 at 125th of a second seemed to work good. Uh, if you have on a tripod, you can go with a slower shutter speed and you can go with a, uh, a, a lower ISO. So that's a trade-off that you can choose if you have a tripod or not. Um, I definitely suggest using a tripod for the shooting uh, when it comes time to the solar eclipse. Now what's going to happen during the solar eclipse is that the sun obviously will slowly be uh, obscured by the moon. You'll take pictures you know, in, our, in intervals getting up to it. At the moment, if you're in total eclipse, a total eclipse, you're going to want to remove the sun shield. You're going to take this off. You're going to take pictures then with, uh, with exposures. You, if you're in a good spot, like pretty much in the center, you'll have about two minutes of total eclipse. That should be plenty of time to take various exposure ratings and, and find what seems to work. Uh, the other thing I, I want to mention is that the... Um, uh, white balance. If you take it with uh, white balance, uh, just auto, it'll be very orange. If you switch your white balance to incandescent, it'll, it'll be more white. You could probably do that adjustment later in Photoshop or something like that, but I usually, more of a purist, I like to try to get it out of the camera how um, I want to present it. So, you know, as little post-processing as possible. Now, this is the, uh, the 70 millimeter version. Uh, I found that it's probably just barely big enough, or maybe it's a 50 millimeter. I'll have to double check. Um, it'll fit over this 50 millimeter lens. It'll fit over the end of the uh, kit lens. Uh, I'll probably have to tape it. This one, it'll sit relatively pretty well. Um, 
without any issues. But on the kit lens, I'll probably end up taping it. Uh, the sun, you know, you'll be pointing the camera fairly upward, so you may not have to because it'll just sit there. Um, if you do need to tape it, I would suggest getting that blue painter's tape from a hardware store. You can also, you'll have to probably manually focus your camera. So what I was planning on doing is manually focusing the camera, taping the focus ring so it doesn't move, putting this over it, and then possibly taping that to the lens so that it doesn't fall off, and, uh, and then shooting. Uh, I'd also suggest getting some glasses for yourself so that you can view the solar eclipse with your eyes as well as while you're managing the camera. Uh, again, these things seem like they're going like hotcakes. They're on back order, so you might want to jump on them right now as much as you can or find whatever you can, uh, get it ordered. As, as quickly as possible. Now, uh, with all that said, I hope this video is very helpful and uh, I hope you have a good luck shooting the solar eclipse. I don't have any photos that I can share yet because I've never experienced uh, a full solar eclipse in my lifetime, so this will be a first for me. And uh, so, good luck. And I'll share photos when, I'm, uh, when mine's complete. If you like this video or you like other photography videos, please give me a thumbs up and you know subscribe if you like photography videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you very much.